Okay, first off, thank you to everybody who has watched, liked, and subscribed. We are nearing 1,000 subscribers, and we've only been here for a month, so much more to come. And if you like what you see here, make sure to like and subscribe, and also go to smokingrobot.ai and subscribe to our three times a week, week, three times a week AI newsletter. All right, so let's get into this one. Google has had a very bad week based on their announcement of their AI-powered search on Wednesday. I want to break down four reasons why they've had such a bad week, why their stock is down 7%, and then end it with one reason on why maybe we shouldn't be so down on Google. So let's get into it. Okay, number one. So on Wednesday, when Google held their press event in Paris, more on that in a minute, to debut their AI-powered search Bard, they made several key mistakes during and after the presentation. First up, one of their presenters, while about to show a live demo, which required a phone, forgot the phone. She turned, and it wasn't there. And this created a very, very awkward moment, which you could see right here. Let's see how that works with a live demo. We are missing the phone. <laughs> We're missing the phone. <laughs> we will have to... We have no, okay, we're gonna move on. We can't find the phone. Sorry, we'll do a let one later in the special Q&A. Brutal. Not to turn us into an Apple video, but that would never happen at an Apple keynote. Those things are masterclasses in product marketing, both in terms of scripting, cinematography, and even continuity, the way they sort of roll them out and, and launch products. Like, this would not happen, and it shouldn't have happened. It should happen to no Fortune 500 company, especially one presenting in, in front of the size of audience that was being live streamed, like Google was on Wednesday. So that's a key blunder, but that's really, that really wasn't their AI part portion of the event, so it kind of went underlooked, but it was kind of embarrassing. But what really got it is when they showed an example of what their AI-powered search Bard put out, it got an answer wrong. So after the event, they put out a GIF and a video showing what would happen if someone, a nine-year-old asked Bard three accomplishments of the James Webb Space Telescope. And it gave answers one, two, and three, of course, and one and two were correct. And then three was apparently either incorrect or debatable. It said that it had taken the first picture of an exoplanet or whatever, and a bunch of uh, astronomers came out and said, no, 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 that's wrong. Or, and, you know, I don't know, some others might be able to debate it, but the point is it's stated as fact, and it is very much not fact. It is not accurate. This is the thing they used to announce their AI-powered search. Like, how do you get that wrong? It is super embarrassing. It's one thing, like, AI is going to make mistakes. Everybody knows that. ChatGPT makes mistakes. Bing's going to make mistakes. But you're announcing this thing to the world. Everyone's looking at Google to get this right. They are the search giant. And the one example they choose has a factual error in it. And it was at that moment, their stock went down 7%. People freaked out, and they're like, oh, my God, they are nowhere near ready to compete with Bing in AI-powered search. So that is reason number one. Okay, let's get on to reason number two. The whole thing seemed rushed and disjointed. So you know if you make a presentation in front of a classroom or uh, a bunch of coworkers or a client, you know, you really want to prepare for that thing because anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And a lot and as we just saw, a lot went wrong for Google. And it certainly seemed like they had not been working on this event for a very long time, both in terms of preparation, but just in terms of like actually having it and announcing BARD. Think about the timeline of events. It was just two weeks ago that their CEO, Sundar Pichai, linked to a blog post from one of his company's chief scientists. It was 15,000 words deeply technical about all the stuff Google was doing in the background on AI tech. I'm sure most of it very impressive. Absolutely. But then it preached caution, and it really kind of hinted that Google was nowhere near ready to ready to release any major AI products anytime soon, certainly no standalone products. And it gave off the indication that they weren't going to release anything even similar to ChatGPT because they were concerned about the impact on humanity. Now, how truthful they're being there and are they maybe just behind? Who knows? But you left that announcement, blog post, whatever it was, two weeks ago, thinking, OK, well, Google's not going to do anything for a while. Fast forward, and they have an event on Paris on Wednesday and then put out a press release two days earlier on Monday to talk about their AI-powered search tool, BARD. And it was like, okay, like, are you guys, have you guys been planning this? Because, like, the timing of this doesn't really seem to make sense. And one has to worry that it wasn't until November when ChatGPT came out and then Google started panicking. It was like, okay, we got to get something out there quickly. And here you are. This is what happens when you rush an event out. 
Okay, number three, and this sort of ties into the timeline here, but it seems like they're reacting to everything Microsoft and OpenAI are doing. So it's clear that when ChatGPT came out in November, it caught everybody off guard. People knew the tech was there, but they were not ready for this sort of product to sort of take over uh, human imagination the way it has with over 100 million registered users. Everyone looked to Google because so much of what ChatGPT does uh, is kind of replace things that you might put in the search. Maybe 30% of the things you would put in the search is better served by ChatGPT, and that's a big problem for Google. And they called this code red moment. The New York Times reported that they brought in founders Sergey and Larry to really kind of help them through it. And it seemed they probably formulated a plan at some point over the holidays and into the new year. But that's not a great strategy for a, such a good, well-run, strong company the way Google is. And if you needed any more indication, they're actually just reacting on the fly to what Microsoft's doing here. Two weeks ago when that blog post came out, it didn't seem like they were ready to announce anything. And then Microsoft last week sends a secret message to a bunch of journalists saying, hey, we're going to have an event. It's an embargo. It means a journalist can't talk about it until Microsoft says it's okay. We're going to have an event next Tuesday to talk about our AI-powered search. 70 to 100 people are invited. The tech journalists don't say anything, but certainly, at least publicly, but certainly word leaks out to Google that an event's coming up. They have something in Paris the next day. So they crowbar the AI portion into their Paris event. And then when they find out that Microsoft's event is on Tuesday, a day before, they put out a press release on Monday announcing what they go were going to re announce on Wednesday. In fact, that press release had more detail than the actual announcement itself. So really weird sequence of events here. Imagine if Apple were to you know, hold one of their big iPhone events, but then send out a text press release two days earlier announcing the new iPhone 15 Max or something like that. Like, they would never do that. You have these events so you can walk through everything, control the message, handhold people, put your best foot forward and all of that. And Google, it seems, realized Microsoft was going to be a day ahead of them, so they're like, ah, screw it, let's get it out in a press release. Not a great sign. Okay, number four. What they announced wasn't that impressive. So there is a really high bar for Google when it comes to search, and there should be. They are the search giant. So everyone thought that, like, okay, they're going to have a really good reaction here. After all, they developed and built a lot of the tech that is in ChatGPT, which is now used by OpenAI, Microsoft, and their new AI-powered Bing. So when everyone saw what Microsoft put out on Tuesday, which is pretty impressive, it was a really thoughtful way to integrate AI in search. And they walked through four components, what the layout's going to be, how it's going to work, what it will do, what it doesn't do, how it helps you. You know, it was a really, really well done presentation. Maybe one of the best things Microsoft's done for a consumer facing product in decades. So the next day, Google has their event. They put out the release on Monday. It was kind of sparse on detail, other than we're going to have this AI powered chat thing that, you know, the expectation is okay, it helps you kind of answer queries without having to go to other links. But this is Google, after all. Certainly they're going to have a thoughtful presentation on how it's integrated into the world's largest search engine. Does it sit alongside Gmail and Google Docs? Like there's so, many, so much potential for this. And they actually gave less detail on Wednesday than they did on Monday. And the one example they showed had a factual error. Like it was a total disaster. But not only that, like it wasn't that good or impressive. Now, does that mean what they put out is going to suck? No, not necessarily. We know right now that these chatbots make errors. Like, they are not immune from error. That's been well documented with ChatGPT. Microsoft's new Bing will certainly have errors too. But at a minimum, you have to make sure you get it right in the presentation. So not only did Google get things wrong, but they didn't show anything new. They really didn't even show much of an interface. They didn't show how well it was going to sit alongside search results. They didn't show how it was going to be integrated into Chrome. They didn't give any added level layer of detail. So when you compared Microsoft's slick event and their thoughtful way they were going to combine AI with search, and then you looked at Google, who everyone looks to as a leader in this space, and you're like, oh, that was not as good. Even if the tech and integration winds up being more or less the same user experience down the road, Google showed us nothing that it was going to match or be better than Microsoft. And that's a big problem for them. Okay, so those are four reasons why Google had a very bad week. But let me give you one why it might not be time to sell and maybe uh, be a little bit bullish on Google here. Okay, bad presentations. We've, that's been well documented now, right? And clearly they're playing catch up or a little bit behind or weren't ready or wanting to release sort of consumer productized AI to the market yet. And they've kind of had their hands forced into it. That doesn't mean they're not going to ultimately 
put out something good. Keep in mind, 10 years ago when the Yelps and the Expedias came along, they really sort of threatened Google search because pe people thought you were going to go to Yelp to look for restaurants. You were only going to go to Expedia, look for flights and so on and so forth. And Google really reacted to that by uh, surfacing those results at the top of search. Those other sites still exist, but when you want to book a hotel or a flight, a lot of times just go to Google. If you want a restaurant review, they added Google reviews. They've reacted to threats before and they probably will here as well. You also have to remember that a demonstration is not necessarily the output of the product. So Google built a lot of the tech that is powers OpenAI, ChatGPT, and the new Bing. They have basically the same engine running this thing. Maybe the user experience and the presentation wasn't as thoughtful as Microsoft's, but that doesn't mean they're not going to get there and quickly. Clearly they are iterating and this is a major focus for them. And when you add in the fact that Google is the search, you know, they get like 90% of search. Chrome is the most popular browser. Android is the most popular mobile operating system, and it has Chrome and Google search built in. So even though there might be a little bit behind Microsoft right now, Bing has to steal market share from Google. If Google can quickly get the AI to give you similar level results to what Bing is putting out, guess what? They already have the advantage. Even if it's not quite as good and maybe Bing's a little bit more slick and thoughtful, better user interface, whatever it is, if Google's like 90% of the way good, given the fact that so many people just default to it now, most people aren't going to care. They're going to say, you know what? This is good enough. I have Google. I use Gmail. I use Google Docs. I have an Android phone. Like I'm not switching to Bing because like it gives me a slight slicker AI response. So the bar is really high for Microsoft to beat Google and Google's just got to catch up quickly and sort of match them feature for feature. And since they've built the tech and have the same engine under the hood, shouldn't be that hard for them to do. So that's one reason why maybe, maybe the stock's a little oversold. You have to remember when the market goes, you know, half the stock market is traded by algorithms. This was basically AI trading on AI news. And you look at the headlines that came out Wednesday, they make a mistake. There's no phone. Their AI gets a wrong answer. People are disappointed. They're underwhelmed. Well, guess what? The AI algorithms see that and they sell, sell, sell the stock, right? And then you get a bunch of individuals and retail investors who are like, Ugh, Microsoft look good. Google looks terrible. I'm going to sell too, right? And that's how you get stocks that go down 7%. Keep in mind, their stock was up 7% not long before that. So the thing's probably a little oversold. The market, I think the tech world is overreacting to a very, admittedly very bad presentation. But I'd be a little bit bullish here. And if you're like looking to invest in the market, this is not investment advice. It's pr you've probably been worse times to buy. I'll put it that way. So let's see if Google catches up. I don't think all is lost, but they did, in fact, have a very bad week. But there's, there's reason for, uh, for some upside here. Anyway, if you like this video, really appreciate you watching. Make sure to give a, give a like, give a subscribe, leave a comment. Happy to engage. I'm going to get in there and talk about some of the ideas discussed here. And make sure you go to smokingrobot.ai, subscribe to our three times a week AI newsletter. It's entertaining. It's fun. It's informative. A little bit irreverent. I promise you like it. And uh, thanks for watching.